Here we're asked to graph y equals the square root of 2 minus x. And we're going to go about this by drawing up a table of values and plotting them and then connecting them in a way that uh, forms, forms the function. So the first thing that we should always do when we've got an x inside a square root sign is to consider the domain of this function. Remembering that the domain of a function is all the possible x values that we could input into the function and get y values valid, y values out, or all the valid inputs that we could put in here. So the restriction that we have on this domain is whatever is, is within this square root sign, that has to be greater than or equal to zero, because that's how we define the square root. If we have square root of, say, minus one, or minus two, or any negative number, uh, that is undefined for our purposes. We can't associate that with a real number. So consequently, the domain here, the domain is that everything within this function, or sorry, everything under the square root sign has to be greater than or equal to zero. Let's simplify this down a bit. We could subtract two from both sides here and we get negative x is greater than or equal to negative two. And let's divide both sides by negative one. Remembering that when, when we divide both sides by negative one and we're dealing with inequalities, we have to swap the inequality. So this is greater than or equal to, but here we're dividing by a negative number, so it'll be less than or equal to. So we've got x is less than or equal to two. So that means that the values of x for which this function is defined, it's only defined for values less than or equal to two. So it is defined for say x equals minus one, x equals zero, x equals one, even x equals two, but it's not defined for x equals three because three is not less than or equal to two. So that being the case, let's now draw up a table of values and let's have this guide which table of values we choose or which x values we choose rather. So here we're going to choose, uh, we're going to choose say minus two, minus one, zero, one, and two. And notice we're not going to choose three because three isn't a part of the domain. And these, so these are the, these are all valid inputs because they're part of the domain. And let's consider the associated y values. So here, whenever we see x, we're going to substitute negative two for x here in order to find the y value associated with x equals negative two. So we'll have two minus negative two. Okay, so two minus negative two. Well, a, a, a negative, when we've got negative negative, so a minus and a minus sign, that's plus. So we'll have, this is actually gonna be two plus two. So two plus two is four, so we'll get the square root of four. The square root of four, well two times two equals four, so the square root of four is two. So here the associated point we'll put up here is minus two, two. Okay, what about x equals minus one? Well, x equals minus one, we get square root of two minus and then minus one. Again, if we have a negative, if, if we have a number and then we've got a negative and another negative sign, well, a negative and a negative, that makes a positive. So we could rewrite this as two plus one. This is the square root of two plus one. What's well, the same as saying the square root of three? What's the square root of three? Well, I don't know. Uh, I can't do that in my head. So let's go to a, a calculator. Here we've got a calculator. And what we'll do is to use this calculator, we press three and then we press the square root of X button. So this is like the square root of three that we're after. So we get 1.7320, etc. So here we can just round off to one decimal place. So this is 1.7. So we can write here 1.7. So this point is negative one, 1.7. Okay, what about x equals zero? At x equals zero, we have y equals two minus here x equals zero, so zero. This is easy, this is the same as saying square root of two, because two minus zero is two. Square root of two, again, I don't know that in my head, so let's go to our calculator. Uh, what we'll do is we'll do two, and then we'll do the square root symbol again. So here the square root of two is 1.41, blah, blah, blah. So here we can just worry about this bit, the, the first decimal place, so 1.4, and we're gonna round down, so this is gonna be 1.4. So this point is zero, 
1.4. Okay, two more to go. Here we've got x equals 1. So here we're going to have y equals 2 minus 1. 2 minus 1 is 1, so this is square root 1. 1 times 1 is 1, so the square root of 1 is 1. So here it's going to be 1, 1 is going to be our point. Finally, we've got x equals 2. So here we've got the square root of 2 minus 2. 2 minus 2 is 0, so this is going to be the square root of 0. 0 times 0 is 0, so the square root of 0 is 0. So here this point is going to be 2, 0. Okay. Well, now I've got all these points, let's go ahead and plot them on the graph. So this first one, we've got minus 2 and 2. So there's going to be 2 units left to the origin and 2 units up. Looks like it's going to be here. Here we've got minus 1 and 1.7. So there's going to be 1 unit left to the origin and 1.7 units up. That's going to be about there. Here we've got 0 and 1.4. So it's going to be 0 units left to right of the origin and 1.4 units up. 1.4 units up about there. Here we've got the point 1 and 1, so it's 1 unit right of the origin and 1 unit up. And here we've got 2 and 0, so that's 2 units right of the origin, 0 units up or down. Okay, and we know the broad, uh, the broad shape of a, uh, a square root function, and so let's apply that here. So the shape is going to be something like this, connecting all these points. So it's not perfect but it's the general shape. And we've shown here the y-intercepts and the x-intercept, which is important when we're graphing. And so we're done. This is the way that we've, we've graphed y equals the square root of two minus x. And uh, that's what it looks like.